Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I am going to show you the solution for question 2 from the May 2011 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. Alrighty, so they're telling us at start that Chester and Norwood have been in partnership for several years. Their partnership agreement provides for the following. So we have four items here. Let's take a read. So partners are to receive interest at the rate of 10% per annum on their opening capital balances. Interest at a rate of 5% per annum is to be paid on partners' drawings during the year. Norbert is to receive a salary of 1500 per month. That's a very important detail there. And profits and losses are to be shared equally. Okay, let's scroll on a bit. What else are they telling us here? It says the following information has been extracted from their books. Partners capital accounts at the start of January 2010, we have Chester 250, Norbert 150, and we also have current account balances for Chester and Norbert. Chester has a balance of 24,000. Now Norbert's balance is in brackets. What does that mean? That means it's a negative, or in this case, a debit balance. So Norbert has a debit balance on their current account. Okay, and we have another little paragraph here that says, on July 1st, halfway through the year, which is in bold, which indicates it's something important to pay attention to, Chester and Norbert admitted Telford to the partnership. Telford brought in 40000 in cash, a motor car valued at 35000 and equipment valued at 25000 The first thing they want us to do is they want us to prepare the journal entry to record the admission of Telford into the partnership. Now, just so you know, even though this question is more than a decade old, um, partnership changes were not and still currently are not on the CSEC POA syllabus. So this question was a bit of an anomaly, even if I do say so myself, because I do actually like for them to bring things that make you think and that are a bit out of your comfort zone, right? Even on an exam where it's a bit of a risky prospect, I didn't too much agree with them bringing this particular one, but the way they try to bring it kind of makes it a bit possible. But anyhow, we can do a journal entry. So let's pull up our general journal. So of course, don't forget your general journal entries will have debit entries first, followed by credit entries. And the credit entries will be indented relative to the debit entries. Now, I skimped on the date column and the folio column because I felt they were not very important to put right now. But if they give you those things in exam and they give you information with which to populate those columns, please do populate the columns with the correct information. Okay, what did this guy or um, Telford bring in? So Telford brought in 40000 in cash. A motor car valued at 35,000 and equipment valued at 25. Those are all assets and assets increase with debits. So those three items, cash, motor car and equipment are going to come in. And of course, whatever the owner brings in is capital, which of course will be credited. And of course, the sum of the debit items is equal to the credit item. And don't forget to put your narration. The question didn't say to omit narratives or omit narration. So if they don't say to omit it, you need to put it. It's a standard part of any journal entry. And it doesn't have to be long. So I just put to record the entry of Telford to the partnership on July 1st, 2010. You could have written something shorter, something longer that just simply captures the essence of what happened in that transaction or event. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of the question now. Okay, so it goes on to say that between Jan 1 and December 31st of that year, the following activities occurred. So we have partners' drawings, Chester and Norbert, 6,400 and 7,000 respectively. We also have net income of 122,330 was earned evenly throughout the year. So you see that phrase was earned evenly. That means basically what they're saying is that the 122,330 was accrued almost like an equal equal components every month. So if you were to divide 122,330 by 12, so every month they earned that portion. So it wasn't that they were earning little bits in the first half of the year and all of a sudden revenue or net income jumped up, right? Or that it was they earned a lot in the early part of the year, nothing in the middle and plenty at the end. That's not what they say, right? Now they did that to be able to facilitate asking you to do something else late in the question. Now we also have a couple of things here. We have that the only change in the partnership agreement provides for profit or loss to be shared among the partners in a ratio Chester 3, Norbert 2 and Telford 1. All other provisions remain the same. Now, the thing is, like I said, partnership changes are not and were also then not on the CSEC POA syllabus. So this item here, like I said, was a little more, a little tricky for a lot of students. But basically what you have to do when you're sharing the profit is you have to share the profit in two pieces, one before 
the new partner came in and went after, but I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's going to come in. But like I said, they did actually ask you things that were quite doable. So let's take a look at part B. It's asking us to prepare the, an extract of the partnership appropriation account up to the share of remaining profit for the year ended December 31st, 2010. So you're going to do the appropriation account, but you're going to stop before you, you share the remaining profit. Okay. So let's, of course, pull up that item here. Chester, Norbert and Telford, appropriation account extract. You can put partnership appropriation account as they have it there. That's fine. And for the, so FYE stands for the year ended. So for the year ended 31st December 2010. So the first thing I'm going to put in here is of course the net income of 122,330. So let's populate that item. And then we're going to add the interest on drawings. Now only Chester and Norbert had drawings as we see here, 6,407,000. ,000. And the interest on drawings, we're going to see that it was 5% per annum to be paid on partner's drawings. So all we have to do is multiply 5% by the 6,400 for Chester and 5% for the 7,000 for Norbert. We get 320 and 350 respectively. Adding them to get together, sorry, gives us 670, which when added to the net income gives us 123,000, which we will then appropriate. Now, we have two sets of appropriations to do before we share profit. We have interest on capital, and that's going to go to Chester, Norbert, and Telford. Now, Chester and Norbert had capital balances of 250000 and 150000 respectively. And we saw that in the general journal we just did that Telford's capital was 100000 Now, the interest on capital is given at a rate of 10% per annum. Per annum means for a whole year. So Chester and Norbert are just going to get 10% of their capital balances straight off the bat. 10% of 250 is 25,000. 10% of 150 is 15,000. Telford came in halfway during the year. Telford cannot get the full 10% because 10% is for the whole year. Because Telford was only there for half a year, Telford would get half of that, which is 5%. So you're going to see a little working here. 10% of 100,000 multiplied by 6 out of 12 six months out of a whole 12 for a year. And that's going to give Telford an interest on capital of $5,000. The subtotal there is going to be 45000 And don't forget, they told us that Norbert is to receive a salary of 1500 per month. Be seeing that there are 12 months in a year, 1500 by 12 is 18000 Now, when we add the 45 to the 18, we are going to get 63, which when subtracted from the 123 above gives us 60000 which is the share, well, the profit before it is shared. Okay, now let's take a look at the last part of the question. Okay, so it says complete the worksheet provided to arrive at the share of remaining income or profit earned by each partner, three marks. So as you can see, even if you weren't sure what to do, it was only three marks, right? But of course, let's take a look and see what we were supposed to do. So I have here Chester, Nobert, and Telford statement showing share of profit for the year ended 31st December 2010. So what, like I said, what you have to do is you have to split the 60,000 we just found into two periods. The period before the partner came, a new partner came in and the period after the new partner came in. So the partner came in exactly halfway in the year. So therefore we're going to split the 60 into two sets of 30. The 30,000 between Jan 1st and June 30th and the remaining 30 between July 1st and December 31st. So we're going to start with the six month period ended 30th June. So if you remember, the partners were sharing profits and losses equally prior to the entrance of Telford. So that means out of the 30,000 that was available, Chester will get 15, sorry, 50%, which is 15,000, as will Norbert. So that, of course, will give them in total the 30,000 going to them. Now, for the six-month period ended 31st December, so from July 1st to 31st December, they have Chester, Norbert, and Telford. Now, they did say that the only change in the partnership agreement provides for profit or loss to be shared among the partners in a ratio Chester 3, Norbert 2, and Telford 1. So that's a 3, 2, and 1 split. So you have to add 3, 2, and 1, which gives 6. And then you're going to put each of those numbers over 6. So it's a 3, 6 to Chester, 2, 6 to Norbert, and 1, 6 to Telford. So the profit to be split, of course, is 50% of the 60 because the 60,000 was for the whole year and six months, the remaining six months after Telford joined represents half of the year. So half of the year's profit is going to be shared here. So like I was saying, Chester will get three sixths of that, Norbert will get two sixths and Telford will get one sixth. So 15, 10 and 15 add back to 30 and everything is shared out.
Okay, now the last thing they want us to do is the current accounts. Let's take a look there. Okay, so just confirming what I said, prepare the current accounts of the partners as at December 31st, 2010. Okay, so the opening balance is given to us with 24 for Norbert, sorry, 24 for Chester and negative 15 or debit for Norbert. So we're going to put in Norbert's balance on the debit side and we're going to put in Chester's balance on the credit side. Now, what goes in the appropriation account? Well, the earnings and withdrawals of the partners. The earnings are such things as the interest on capital, the salary, and the share of profit. So we have two sets, one for just Chester and Norbert and one for Chester, Norbert and Telford. What about the withdrawals? What are withdrawals? Well, literally the drawings, which were given to us in the question, and the interest on drawings as calculated in the appropriation account. Now, seeing that those are all of the items to go, we have to balance off now. So to balance off, for example, for Chester, you'll add up everything on Chester's credit side, add up everything on the debit side and find the difference. So clearly the balance will be carried down from here. Same thing for nobody, add up all the credit items, you subtract all the debit items and that balance will be carried down from the debit side. And Telford of course will also all, um, have a balance carried down from the credit side. Let's put those balances in and of course as we see when we add down both sides now, the totals end up being the same under each column on both sides. So for Chester you have 79 and 79, Norbert 58 and 58, Telford 10 and 10 and we bring down the balances like so. And that's it for this question. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question two from the May 2011 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.